Okay, guys, I'm back. Thanks for letting me know that I was flipped the wrong way before uh, with the camera. I had my phones in that, you know how you can lock your um, horizontal, vertical, so that's what I did, and it did not switch to horizontal, even though I rotated the camera to horizontal for streaming, so I apologize about that, but now we're back, and let me just get this focused on the painting here. Focus. Okay, so we've got our landscape. In the last little video, 10 minute video, I was working on these clouds. So I'm gonna pick up right where I left off. Hope you guys can uh, join me again. Thanks for letting me know earlier that I had the camera the wrong way. <laughs> All right, so I was just working on these highlights in here. I think I'm gonna start to add some highlights down in this area. And then I can build up some highlights and shadows in this part of the cloud. So I'm just working on adding these highlights. This is one of the puffier clouds down here. So it is farther away. I'm gonna add a little bit more permanent rose and white to this color I made and kind of build up that color. Now this is a little more saturated than it is in my reference photo, but currently I kind of like it. So I'm gonna leave it. Let it blend. Might be a little too much, but we'll see. All right, we got one person came back. <laughs> I'm going to make my way back up to that top cloud, start to build the shadows, see if we can get some depth in this cloud, because right now it looks very flat.
else I want to try to keep that same texture we have of the sky in the background. So our clouds have a puffy texture and the sky in the background has a nice smooth back and forth diagonal line. So we don't want to have puffy texture where we're supposed to be peeking through the clouds. We want to have that smooth texture there. darker over here. That might be a little bit too much red in that color. A little more purple by adding some ultra marine blue. That's much better. It still seems a little much. I don't have very much paint on my brush right now. I'm just kind of blending what's left on the brush into my clouds. And I have a bit of paint thinner on there as well, so I'm getting this nice, uh, I'm just carrying the paint nicely with that bit of paint thinner on the brush. blend this cloud into this nice little purple color that I made. Just a little bit of some highlights in here. I definitely have some highlights up here. I'm just getting that excess paint off of my brush so I can blend. dip my brush back into my paint thinner so I can just kind of sketch out where I'm going to have some highlighted clouds here. Throw these into my purple color. Shadow, oops, that's my color, that's too red. There we go. Easy fix. Give this nice highlight at the top of all of our clouds. All right, I'm gonna take another little break and check on the chat again. Now that we got it fixed. Nice. Hi, RSK Entertainment. Uh, thanks, Wheel Life. All right, he at Wheel Life asked, uh, what makes you paint golf courses over other landscapes? My paintings are amazing. So thank you very much. So I, I golf myself, so that's why I like to paint golf course landscapes. I do paint other landscapes too. I paint uh, national park landscapes because I'm really into hiking. So I take lots of photos when I go out hiking. And I take photos when I go out golfing and I'll just turn those into paintings. And then a lot of my golf course landscapes are courses where they have uh, championship tournaments and I'll create those paintings because I know that they're going to sell. <laughs> so there's a business aspect to it as well. All right, so getting back to this guy, I'm going to start to add some more highlights up in here.
it's kind of starting to come together. It's a pretty repetitive process to make clouds. It's just add a shadow, you know, add a highlight on top of it, and then further define your borders for your shadows and your highlights and just keep playing with it until you feel like you made the cloud look like a real cloud. There's a lot of time that can go into painting clouds for something that isn't quite the main focus of your piece it really can make or break a landscape if your sky doesn't look realistic then it's just gonna throw everything off so it is important to have your sky looking realistic even though it might not be the main focus of your painting I really do enjoy painting the sky. It's very calming just to focus on something that doesn't have to look exactly like anything. You know, you can kind of have some freedom to make it look the way you'd like it to look. too much paint on there so if you plop too much paint on there then just take your brush and like slowly whisk it off section of the clouds. And for my Highlight, as I mentioned before, I'm not using pure white. I'm using a white mixed with titanium, oh, sorry, titanium white mixed with uh, cadmium yellow and a little bit of permanent rose. And I also made a blend of cadmium yellow, white, and cadmium red light. And that gives me an even warmer highlight. So I just keep taking that excess paint off of my brush and kind of working at the edge that I just made here to let it blend in with my background, making it nice and soft. I don't want any harsh straight lines, I want everything to be soft, puffy shapes. When I work with beginners uh, for painting clouds, beginners are really good, at least all the ones I've worked with, are really good at matching colors with the sky. I've, I've noticed that they're very good at getting the right color to uh, paint the sky, but I, I noticed that they have trouble with the brushwork. And they'll either um, like push too hard and they'll get like too solid of a line, or uh, they don't blend. 
and they just have these like you know shadow highlight blocks that don't look quite realistic so learn, I think learning brushwork is very important if you want to improve your cloud painting just like the way that you can angle your brush and the amount of pressure you apply with your brush, the amount of paint that's on your brush, if your brush has any varnish or not varnish, um, paint thinner on it. There are a lot of different methods you can use to create cloud um, create brush strokes that can make clouds. <laughs> forget how to talk when I'm painting sometimes. I guess I forget how to talk all the time. <laughs> so again, taking the excess paint off my brush and I'm just very lightly pressing and kind of Doing a little back and forth motion and that's giving me this nice little fuzzy look. See how I made it nice and fuzzy there? Just a little back and forth like that. Alright, so I'm going to check on the chat again, see if anything new is happening. Alright, Peter. Hi, Peter. Arte, Arte Oscar, hi. <laughs> oh, thanks, Peter. He loves watching art. Thank you very much. All right. So we're going to get back. Whoops. Hold on. <laughs> I'm pressing buttons. All right. So we're going to get back to painting here. So that actually from the camera, the painting, the sky is looking pretty good already. But I am going to keep working on it. I'm going to, I think this area looks a little bit weak right now. So I'm going to continue working on this. And then my brush will probably take me over here again at some point. But yeah, cloud's coming in pretty nicely. So next, I think I want to take a little bit of my sky color and let this part where the sky was kind of... That can have a little bit of a sharp line there because it's just kind of making its way in and ending where the background sky is peeking through. can even use some ultramarine mixed with my uh, burnt umber and cadmium, or not cadmium, <laughs> titanium white right here. And that's giving me like a little shadow in the cloud. It's helping me to boost that definition and depth and give me a little bit more three-dimensional look in the cloud here. So phthalo blue is a really good color for like a nice day. So that's my sky has a lot of phthalo blue in it. And then ultramarine blue is a really good shadow color for clouds. So there's ultramarine blue in here. It looks more purple. And then your phthalo blue is more of your uh, background sky color. And I'm using oil paint here. I guess I forgot to mention that earlier. But same deal with acrylic paint. If you can find phthalo blue or ultramarine blue acrylic paint, it's going to be similar to my oil paint colors that I'm using. So we have a nice highlight here. This is all really bright. So I'm going to grab some more white, blend that in with my highlight color. Just paint that highlight right over these clouds I already put in. And then 
the underside of this big cloud also has a nice highlight there. I'm just kind of blending that up into the cloud above it. to my phthalo blue. here. I think the number one uh, difficult thing for oil painting is that your colors get murky and they blend together because the paint takes so long to dry and that starts to happen a little bit so what you do if your colors start to like I call it getting like get murky like they blend together so say my my highlight color is blending in with my shadow color behind it then you can either really thicken the paint and throw a thick layer over it like this, um, which then, you know, you kind of blend out the edges or you can, you know, scrape that paint off, throw some new paint on there, or you can use your paint thinner and add like a thin layer of the paint on top. I've got a couple different options, but that's another uh, thing that I see a lot of beginner oil painters do is they'll be painting and the colors look really murky. You don't get these really vibrant, bright colors because the color that they're putting on top of a darker color is blending in. Take my phthalo blue again and try to separate these clouds just a hint down here. So we have a little bit of sky peeking through. Still using a small round tipped brush. Just kind of build up a little bit of shadow down here. And this is my ultramarine blue color blend. Oops, a little too much there, it's a little too dark. So I'm blending my permanent rose with my yellow and white. I ran out of that color, so I'm making a little bit more. And I'm gonna add the highlight that we have on the base of this cloud. And so this angle that the clouds are following.
blend this highlight in. And now I want to blend these in because it has a nice little soft highlight fade here. Ultramarine blue, but not my dark shadow. Ultramarine blue, this one is like a base color, ultramarine blue. And I'm gonna throw a little more phthalo though, because there's tons of sky peeking through here. Phthalo blue kind of peeking through over here too. Now I'm just mixing a little bit of black with some ultramarine blue and a hint of phthalo blue. Maybe a little more phthalo blue, I think. There we go. Okay, going back to a highlight color. I'm using that same brush, so it mixed it in with my shadow color a bit so the highlight's not too strong. All the paint off my brush, just let it blend. My brush is dry, so we're just using some dry brush technique here to just add a little bit more pigment into the sky where the clouds are. Softening up the edges of these clouds, shapes. Alrighty, how's it looking? It's looking pretty good. I still feel a little this area is weak here. I think I'm gonna add a hint more of my rose to my cadmium yellow. And build these highlights up again. Yeah, make this a little bit more bluey maybe. And I think maybe what I did is made that phthalo blue with the other clouds peeking through a little bit too strong. A little bit too uh, vibrant. This is the problem. I'm just going to take some of my, there we go, my ultramarine blue and just kind of blend that in with that background. And now I think that looks much better. And I still want to keep this nice and highlighted here. Okay. 
this area. Can build this up a bit too. So I'm piling the paint on a little bit thicker now because I have a decent amount of paint on here already and it wants to blend in with my shadow behind it. All right, how's it looking? I think it looks pretty good. I think it's about what I was going for with the sky. Maybe hint more shadow over here. And hint more down here. to give this a little more three-dimensional look. So pop those on in there. And a little more highlight. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to know when to stop. I definitely have that problem. Because I could keep playing with these clouds for a long time, but... Okay. One more thing. <laughs> this right here. Just build these up a tiny bit more. Be nice and soft. Alrighty, blend these out a bit too. Alright, now I think I think we can call this a sky, guys. There. Alright, yep. Oop, one more. <laughs> Alright, cool. I'm gonna call that a sky. Um, let's see, next, so the next was gonna be part three where I'm just gonna work on all the detail on the course. I think 
while I have some stuff on my, some paint on my palette, I'm gonna work a little bit on these trees back here. And then um, I'll stop the stream after I get a little bit of those trees there. And then I think on Thursday is when I will finish this painting for part three. So I'm gonna call this one, right now I have this called part three, but I'm gonna change this to part 2.2 .2 since earlier I uh, made the mistake of holding this up uh, in portrait instead of landscape. <laughs> All right, so yeah, let's uh, get started on these down here. So we got some autumn trees. this up for you so you can see so I'm just gonna work on these guys back here um, we just got some like kind of sagey colored turquoise blue green tree there some very faded brown beige there some like burnt sienna brown there some sap green in there a little bit of yellow with sap green in here so we've got here, I can zoom in for you actually there you go so we're gonna work on these trees back here, and then we'll uh, stop for today. So these trees are gonna be a little fuzzy because they are farther in the distance and they're, they're so far away that we can't see each individual leaf. We can't even see each individual branch. So things are gonna be a little fuzzy. I'm gonna start with this guy back here, I think. So I'm gonna mix actually have this someone just got me a new palette set where I got these skin tone colors and these look like they're very very old but they're working pretty well um, and this is the brown that I got it just says dark too it's one of the skin color uh, palette paints and I like it a lot so far I'm using it in my landscapes um, but yeah that's that color mixed with a hint of um, burnt umber too. So this is a flat tipped brush. It's small, it's a little bit frayed. Um, it's not in the best shape, but it's really good for making trees that are far away because we can make these little fuzzy looking branches that kind of looks like how we would see those branches if we were looking at this in real life. So we just want to get these colors. And remember, when you're working this far away, you're not going to have anything be true black, since it's unless you were painting, you know, a nighttime scene. <laughs> but everything here is going to be less saturated, have less contrast when it's far away. And then as we move closer, we build up our contrast, and we get some more. We get darker shadows and lighter highlights. So now I just got some burnt sienna, a little bit of white. I'm just gonna use that up here. A little more white. Yeah. Yeah, that's working. And then a little bit of light coming in right here. And down there gonna get a little bit less flashy okay good we got a little bit of a shadow down here just using some ultramarine blue that uh, is blending with the other color already on my brush for that um, let's see we have like a little bit of a highlight behind this tree I'm just gonna kind of fade this out. And then I'm gonna go over with some sap green, mix with a little phthalo blue. I'm gonna dip that brush into my paint thinner. And I'm just gonna let the brush work here just kind of hold it at different angles until I see it making that uh, shape that I wanted to give to look like 
branches sticking out from a tree. ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt umber towards the bottom here. It's a little darker down here. And then we also have a little shadow stronger right here. Okay, now I'm going to use a liner brush because there is a stump that we can see on that tree. So I'm mixing ultramarine blue with my burnt umber and I'm just going to, hopefully this isn't too dark. I'm just going to put a little straight line in there. There we are. Okay. Can't really tell that I did that, but it's there. Now i got to put the liner brush down or else I will use this for the rest of the painting. We do not want to do that because we'll be here for hours and hours. Okay, back to the small brush. I'm mixing my phthalo green with uh, some of the color I mixed earlier. That is like a uh, ultramarine color, and I'm just kind of letting this make its way into this part of the tree. And I'm going to use my sap green ultramarine, or sap green and phthalo blue mixture, and start to add some branches. This is a pine tree way back here. A little bit more phthalo blue. Now we're going to work on this tree. So our highlight on this tree is also that phthalo green. And I'm adding a hint of yellow in there. And I'm going to add a little more yellow. A little more. And again, if anybody has any questions in the chat, uh, just leave that question for me as a comment in the chat and I will uh, get to it at some point here. If you have a question about um, painting techniques or like my background, just leave a comment. little stump that we can see hanging out here. A couple little trees. And then we got some fall colors coming in. So I'm just mixing some of the stuff that's already just hanging out on my palette here. It was a mix of cadmium yellow and cadmium red and burnt sienna. And I'm just kind of letting this brush put it on this tree and it's blending in to my existing color, but that's fine because I don't want to make it stand out too much with the autumn colors there. Okay, now we're going to use some cadmium yellow medium with some of our white needs to be really pure, warm color, so I don't want to muddy it with my cool colors. 
And then that appears to be happening. I'm gonna clean off this brush. There we go. Yeah, that's a little bit brightness you have there. So the sun is hitting these branches. It's making everything really bright. kind of fade into a purple as maybe to the part of the branches that aren't in the sun. Then it kind of fades into a cooler blue, bluish brown. Now here we've got, I'm just gonna get my brush really uh, like fraily, I don't know a good word for that, like really uh, messed up looking like this. <laughs> like this. And then what, we're gonna try to just make some Really fuzzy looking trees. Ah, there we go. That's what I wanted. I dip this in some paint thinner. So let the brush give me some tree limbs. And we're gonna go back with some of our darker brown. Do the same thing on this side here. Good, now we got a hazy couple of trees back there. Can we go back to that highlight? We've got another tree here that is in the light. back to that kind of purple brown. I'm mixing my permanent rose with ultramarine blue and there was a little bit of green in there too. Sometimes I just kind of blend whatever's already blended on my palette and just start to add more colors in. So I apologize if I do that and I don't say what colors I'm using. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna use some phthalo green, or sorry, sap green with some chamomile light. And I'm just gonna put a little shape in for a tree. That's what we've got here. And then we've got a really dark in shadow portion of that tree where I'm gonna mix phthalo green or uh, phthalo blue with sap green, and that's gonna really darken this side of the tree. So I put that dark blob on there, and now I'm just letting it blend in because I don't wanna have too strong contrast yet. We're still pretty far away. blend this in a bit because it's getting a little too 
There are little strips of white that got in the paint area. All right. Can add a little bit more fall colors into this guy. Sun's hitting it. Maybe a little bit. And then here too. Alrighty. Good. Just do a little phthalo green with some colors I already have on here. I'm just gonna throw some of that there. Take some phthalo blue with my burnt umber and just make some little, pretty much parallel lines where we have a pine tree. Phthalo green with some other colors on my palette. I'll give it a little bit of a highlight. Alrighty. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit back here too, and then we'll call it a day. Gonna throw in like a base layer of color for this area back here. Then I'll be ready to work on that after that dries a bit. Okay, I'll do a little bit more over here. Basically, I'm just helping to set myself up for the work I'm going to do in part three. Just saving a bit of time. Defining my tree line a little bit better. There we go. Alrighty, all set to pick up on this next time. So next time we're just gonna get the rest of these trees all detailed and then we're gonna get the course and these uh, bunkers all detailed and then maybe a couple finishing touches 
just to wrap up the piece, but we should finish it up next time. So thanks for joining me. I'm gonna check the chat one more time before I go. Nice, okay. Oh, Peter has to go, he's a doctor's appointment. Oh, hi, Elf. Yay, fall colors, thank you. Nice. Wheel life is there. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks for stopping by. I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.